I have actually been hosting for 10 years. Now, it started off as the Freedompreneur Show while we were traveling the world and we were talking and discussing topics about how to not only, we've built a brand, this is so weird, this light is chasing me everywhere. I have to move it. One second. <laughs> so funny. All right, my light distribution and location was definitely in a weird place. Okay, so this is a, um, how funny, I got to get this out of the way. All right, light location, not in the right spot today. <laughs> but you know what, this is the greatest part about uh, working and being totally transparent while you work online. So again, I'm going to start over again, guys. Welcome to the Help Me Rhonda Show. This is uh, where we talk about building sexy brands and turn them into profit-making machines. I bring guests from all over the world that actually edu help educate people on not only what's happening, what's working now in our industry, right? What's working now on building a business, but a legacy brand in a business that has value, right? And, you know, I talk so often here about what a sexy brand actually means. And, you know, for me, a sexy brand is about truly knowing what your identity is. So today we're gonna to talk a lot about that, but I've actually been bringing on a really powerful guest today to do some follow-up from our last week's call with Kim Barrett. Because everyone has been asking, what is going on more with Facebook? Like, how do I leverage more in my business? How can I help uh, leverage what's coming out now? See, what I like to do here on this show is not only share with my followers, you know, give them the strategies and the steps that I've taken to travel the world for the last 11 years with my family, build our business exclusively online for 13 years, and to be able to share our voice and, our, and create impact around the world with our message. And we leverage social media and the right platforms on how to do that, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna dive more deeply in that today when my guest does arrive. But I wanted to kind of tap into some things and share with everyone, please um, share this. Uh, with someone that you love let us know down below i'm going to be popping on over to my facebook page i can see where you guys are coming in from um, let everyone know that we are live and that they should be joining us um, because what i do here on this show i have a value um, in our show i truly believe that all business owners should be empowered right to take control to market their business or to create and take their gifts and share them with the world, but be empowered by the knowledge and understand and have confidence to know that your work matters, what you do matters, and being able to leverage and understand the right structures or the right foundation of how to get your message out there. You know, how many of you um, have been working on, let me start a little poll here before my guest arrives. How um, many of you have been, are currently now building a business or new to building a business um, leveraging social media okay so let's just talk about that while you guys are arriving um, is how many of you guys are building your business right now on social okay we're getting some people we're getting some people here um, there we go hey guys good to see you okay excellent um, excellent okay great all right perfect um, okay, so, uh, sorry guys, I was just distracted a bit by those of you guys that were joining me in. Um, so you're building a business on social. Now, and it sounds funny to even ask that, doesn't it? Because at this point now in our day, in our age, you have to be using social. It doesn't matter if you're a freedompreneur, if you're living in Bali like I do, or if you are living in, you know, Vancouver or you're in Ohio, right? It's about knowing and understanding the values of your business and how to now leverage the social platforms. You know, I um, got very lucky um, 13 years ago because I actually watched a um, biography or an interview with Steve Jobs. Um, I, in fact, I, I recommend everyone watching this interview with Steve Jobs. Um, he was talking about where the world is actually going. Now, for my background, many of you may or may not know, my background, I was actually a corporate executive for a large pharmaceutical company. So I've run billion dollar accounts, uh, managed a uh, million dollar marketing uh, accounts and teams and took and watched huge advertising, right, going out to the masses. Now, something that I actually realized and why I went from corporate to leveraging online is one thing that these big pharma or these big corporations did is what? 
See, all they were doing, they weren't advertising. They were actually buying our attention. Do you realize as business owners and as marketers, the only thing that we're actually looking for right now is attention. See, the biggest commodity right now on the planet is someone's attention. Do you realize that? Our attention is now being highly valued and has a sticker price. Think about it. You are a business owner. You have something to share. You might, um, you know, you're not, if you're not leveraging social, right, you're still in your uh, have a brick and mortar. You're still trying to get someone's attention when they walk by through marketing or discounts, right? But now look at the, where the world is going. We now are battling for attention. And that means our, it's our timing. How do we get people to watch a video, to stay here on a show right now? How do you get people to click on your link? How do you get someone to want more of what you've got? How do you get someone to go follow you, actually take their attention and their time to go to your website? Business owners, let's get real with ourselves. All we are doing right now, the biggest commodity right now that is being battled for is attention. So if you are a business owner, you've got a gift or something that you want to share to the world, the only thing you have to think about is how do I get more attention? How do I leverage the right platforms? How do I know where my, my audience is at? And how do we get their attention? So imagine this. Imagine yourself being a business owner, having an amazing offer or an amazing service or a great story. And can you imagine being able to share your gifts in front of the world, like expl explode what you do in front of the world and inspire someone? I mean, I can see at one point or another, all of you have had a story to tell and you are, had something that can help transform someone's life. But can you imagine what we're going to talk about today is some of the key elements that you can leverage to only get more attention, how to get your clients and your customers giving you their attention or expand the commodity or the time frame of attention that the world is, 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 is battling for. Can you imagine being able to have a strategy how to do that? Well, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you that exact strategy. It's almost like we're going to give you the keys to the castle. Like it's like a key in your back pocket that you can unlock and use anytime so that you realize the values that you've got, the stories that you have, how to gain more attention, how to take that commodity, which is not infinite anymore, is it? Just for instance, you're on Facebook, you are on Instagram. Look at the amount of attention. We talk about Instagram quite a bit right lately is, you know, Instagram is where those micro bits of content are coming from. But how are you taking the attention from someone that's thumbing through your feeds? There's strategies on how to do that. What about Facebook? How am I able to get, let's say maybe we'll get 30, 40, 50 of you live maybe, but how am I then able to get thousands of viewers and their attention to take the time to watch my show each week? Think about it. Why do you come? Why do you go back? Why do you come back to this show? See, it's all about the strategy and how we're leveraging the right platforms to gain that attention. So let me ask all of you guys right now, what is the, your favorite platform right now? How many of you guys are leveraging, using, um, let's say, Facebook or Facebook Lives? How many of you guys are doing that now and leveraging that for your business? Okay, some of you guys can, can answer me when you're, when you're ready. Um, because right now, when I watch this Facebook Live, is I... Um, saw Steve Jobs and that's what he talked about. He talked about the way the world is moving and that anyone that is, wants to make an impact on the world, the only thing they're gonna have to battle for is the attention of others. See, back when I started my business 13 years ago, there was no social media. There was no Facebook, YouTube, none of that. So I realized early, how was I going to take the attention from those that I wanted to work with me and I wasn't having any brick and mortar facility. I was running my agency and our business, our coaching business directly from the internet. 
So what was I doing? Back then, we did newspaper ads, three-line newspaper ads. I was gaining the attention by putting uh, red boxes around the ad. I was gaining the attention by putting signs saying, I'll work from home, don't believe me, don't call, CEO income. Like that was attention back then, right? I was shouting that way. So then we started, I realized in corporate, I was going in to see doctor's offices and I was actually needing to get the attention of the staff so I could get inside through the gatekeeper to see the doctor. So how did I get the attention back then? I want to give you guys some ideas because it's going to start popping for you. I want you to get this. That the only thing we're battling for is the attention of your followers or the attention of the public. So you got to start getting clever and how am I going to get their attention? Right? So what I would do is I would go in and I would actually dress really silly. I would actually dress really funny when I'd go into doctor's offices and I would get, like I would bring them pens, I'd bring them all kinds of stuff, lunch, because all I needed to do was get, because think about that, a doctor's time is valuable, right? He's valuable. He's got clients that are coming in or patients. So to take the time to talk to me, who back then I was a sales rep. Are you guys with me on this one? You feeling this? I was a sales rep, so I had to take his time. So now I want you to think about this. How are you as a, and share with me on uh, the comments, what is your background? Like, what is it that you're doing now? Are you a coach? Are you a consultant? Um, are you an agency? Are you a service provider? Share with me what it is that you do, okay? Because all we're going to talk about today is how to grab more attention from our audience, how to get them to stop and watch what you're doing, and how to keep them watching. Now, social media's got a lot of new stuff. Like we've had a lot of new announcements, and hopefully if our guest comes out, we'll, and we'll double click more deeply on what those announcements actually are on, on what's taking place in social. But it, all it comes down to is you understanding, and there's actually a structure for grabbing attention. How many of you guys knew that you can actually follow a simple structure of how to actually grab someone's attention. So for instance, right now, I'm just gonna give you some examples. Facebook loves lives. So if you're not using lives, right there and then, I could say that's your number one start. Facebook is loving Facebook Live, why? First off, because it's real, it's a social platform. And even though they have business pages, they still want your business to be social. Right? They're changing the platform of business. They're changing it to the commodity of attention. Facebook is teaching you how to be a better business owner, how to get more engagement, and how to get more attention. Do you realize that? See, this is what I love so much. Thanks for that, Trace. Trace is a service provider. What I love about this the most is that Facebook is always on the edge, right? They're on the edge. They got all of us in their brain. They know exactly what we've got. They're, our brain's in theirs, right? They know what we're thinking. So if you think about it, if Facebook now is asking us to go live, and now we've been doing this, and I've been teaching this, you know, that's one of our, our biggest processes, right, is our 30-day challenge, our 21-day plan which is the structure of how to leverage and grab more attention. See, um, no one really realizes this yet, right? That our commodity, right? The biggest commodity is everyone's attention. That's all we're looking for. It's that click. It's that eyeball. It's that ear. Do you realize that? So Facebook now is teaching how to be a better business owner, meaning get in front of them, create an environment that makes people want to come and play. You know, like right now, I'm, I'm obviously inside of my office, right? So it's not as much of a playful space. But, you know, I'll do my lives, if you guys know. That's my show I do here. But I do my lives, you know, outside, right? I do them in the pool. Why? Because we want to see life, okay? So right now, your number one, and I don't know if our guest is going to make it because he might be having some trouble with his internet. But the number one commodity is going to be attention. And how do we do that? Facebook wants you to go live. But there's a way. See, what we teach inside of our sexy brand building, you guys know it, is there's a way to grab the attention in the live. There's a lot of people failing, right? How many of you have seen a ton of people go live on Facebook and you just scroll right past the feeds? How many of you? Most. I don't know how many Facebook lives I actually watch. The ones I watch are what? 
attention grabbers. They're interesting. There's something that I can, I've never seen before. Like they're on the beach or it's somebody doing this and acting crazy. You've got to find out why they're being crazy, right? Or they're like my daughter in her studio. They're, they're, with, they're doing something interesting. And all along, they're leaving an impact and a message. See, guys, ladies and gents, if you're a business owner, you, Facebook is teaching you how to be more impactful, how to be more attention grabbing. So on your personal page, you leverage your personal page for your, your content that makes people love you. Your business page is about sharing what you do for business, but it's called making it more attention grabbing. So if you're a doctor, you imagine if you're a doctor and you start using Facebook and you actually start showing your procedures, that's interesting stuff, isn't it? Right? That's why people go to YouTube and, and, and they, they research surgery. Can you imagine creating a show that made and, and capitalize on the attention, the commodity, the only commodity we're fighting for and paying for? As marketers and business owners, if you run an ad, guess what? All you're doing is paying for attention. Now, are there ways that we target the ad properly? Absolutely. Right? So we're trying, to, we're, we're trying to trick the algorithms of Facebook with our ads to say, I know that person likes what I do, so I'm going to grab their attention more. See, this is why Facebook is trying to teach you all and why, it's, why I wanted to bring my guest on today, John, because John said to me, and I have you know, proof, he's like, he wrote it, he went to the F8 conference and Facebook and said, oh my gosh, Rhonda Swan, for the last well, years and years and years now I've been doing this, but I actually put the methodology, the sexy brand building formula methodology together just two years ago. And we started testing it. And what happened? We, I started to go live. I started to go live every day. I started to utilize a really special method that we use called the one link. You guys will learn what that is later. And I started to focus on it. And what happened? I'm going live every day. I'm providing content, but not too much content because there is a structure behind it. There's a timeliness. There's the way you set it up, the payoff, the open loop, right? There's an actual structure behind how to make a live, grab more attention, and make people say, yes, I'm in. You guys with me on this, by the way? If anything, at least just enjoying the fact that I'm so excited about this. The fact that, that all we're doing in the world is just grabbing attention and if we can be mindful and aware of the values that your business provides, more attention will come your way. Isn't it crazy to think how simple business actually is? We talk about funnels, we talk about all that stuff, but guys, ladies and gents, if you care about the impact you're making to the world, if you care about what you do and the transformation you can make for other people around the world, all you're looking to do is create attention or grab the attention, right? Then you'll go live. So Facebook is teaching us how to do that. They're saying, guys, let's go live, right? Do that, create more awareness. Now, the structures that we follow in our 30-day uh, challenge are, they have to be followed poignantly. And when John came back, John Court, who's our guest, but it may not become the guest. John Court came back and he said, wow, you've been actually doing it all along. He said, all of your clients are gonna actually get more heavily weighted with attention, with a little help from Facebook boosting for free, because you are giving them what they want. You are actually capitalizing on the attention, the commodity, the most expensive commodity right now on the planet is attention. Think about it. And that's all we're doing as business owners and marketers that are leveraging the online space and the right platforms is getting more and more clever how to grab the attention and keep them there. So if you guys ever realize why the heck I'm so right, crazy and wild and, and you know, this way, well, first off, it's because I love it and I get thrown and I get enjoyed, um, enjoyment and energy when I'm speaking my truth to someone, right? How many of you guys know when you're talking about business and stuff that you hate, you, uh, you got to get dragged up. But if somebody asks you about something you love, boom, you're excited, your elevation lifts, right? I was shared this a while ago with someone. They're like, you know, if every person could actually get so excited and live the life and passions that they love, think about what happened. So if you think about 
part of why I'm like this because I get driven by, but I also know, guess what? It's attention. All you guys are like, what is she going to do next? Like, do you guys remember, um, uh, I know our guest here, I'm going to grab you in a second, John. I want to finish this thought. Um, he was a talk show host, a radio talk show, show host. Um, Brian knows who he was. Curly hair guy, super tall, big nose. What is his name? Who remembers his name? Valley. Still a talk show host. Like, super, um, he, would, he, was, he would confront people. He was, what is his name? Come on, Brian, you know his name. He actually... Like he had a scores, he like Howard Stern, ha <laughs> Mirabella, yes, Howard Stern. Howard Stern was crass, he was annoying, he was confronting, but guess what? He was grabbing attention. Why? Because nobody knew what he was going to say next. That's why people started to, to lean in. So now we're learning that attention is one of the most limited, the, the, the most expensive Commodity we have right now as a marketer and a business owner. And if you can become more interested in other people and create more attention, guess what? Our businesses will grow. And that's what Facebook is wanting us to do more of, right? That's what they want us to do more of. And so it's so perfect that now my guest made it. I know he got, might have gotten stuck joining us. Um, but, but before I bring him out, are you guys with me on this? Are you getting this? Who's with me and feeling the love and realizing now it was that easy? Oh my gosh, I've been fighting so hard to get out of my brain and my knowledge out to people and they're not listening. It's because you haven't been grabbing their attention. You actually haven't been providing them with something that is valuable to them that makes them give up their time from their family. Right? You get that? All right, so what I want to do now, guys, I want to introduce my guest because I'm super excited. How are you, John? <laughs> hey, not bad, Rhonda. Good to be here. I'm so sorry about that. I connected with Zoom and then it froze my computer. Yeah, no worries. And all good. Play with it all and good. then I just reboot, reboot. Yeah, That's no reason. worries. All good. Very nice. I'd love to see you guys. Okay, so listen, guys. I, I, John Court was on here before. I told him I'd bring him up for a follow up. So there's so much stuff we were talking about. And he just got back from uh, F8. And he's getting all the updates literally consistently. Um, but John is he's such a powerhouse. I love learning from John. And every time he posts, I learn from him. Um, but he's also, he runs laser targeted Facebook ads and builds messenger bots. Um, he works with coaches and clients, consultants, people that I work with, right? This is our space, our people, product creators. Um, and he's always, always up to on social. And so every time I want him to come here, um, he brings out you know, the, the, all the newest and updates. And so we've got, he's got some really tight things he wants to share because last week Kim Barrett was here and Kim was talking about some of the updates as well. We're going to go even a bit deeper because why I was sharing with everyone, John, um, is about attention because that's all we're looking for, right? It's that commodity of attention. We're all, you know, we're buying and trading attention. I think Gary Vee said that last year. All we're doing, I'm just trying to grab your attention. I'm trying to get you more interested in what I've got so you realize I'm the one to listen to. And sure enough, what happens? It converts into business, sales, growth, impact, sharing with the world your love. Um, so John Court, how are you, my man? Where are you at right now? Are you in Paris or in France? Um, yeah, I'm in the middle of France, right in the middle, uh, Limoges. All right. Um, <laughs> gosh, I wish I was in French. Here. I, I uh, oh, golly. It was, I learned a French statement. I'm not really good at it, but when I was in Paris and I spoke in Paris, it was like, merci beaucoup uh, de recevoir. Like, thank you for having me, but that would be something you would say. I would say. Right. <laughs> so <I learned. laughs> anyway, so what's happening, my man? Share with us what's going on in your world and what are some of the updates that oh, we... Oh, boy. We, we it's know. been raining. It's been raining. It's, it's my job to keep an eye on the Facebook news. And obviously, Facebook has been expanding its ecosystem. Yes. So it's been working on stuff for a while, but keeping it hush hush. Some of it's sneaked out. Um, some of it, you know, about, and a lot's got dumped on us just recently, right? So, you know, it's not the usual progress of news that I'm getting in terms of cadence. I mean, it's all flooding at once. It's like trying to keep up with it and let my followers know about what's happening on Facebook has been a real challenge recently. You'd know, imagine this image, Rhonda. Fire hose trying to drink. <laughs> It's been like right. trying to drink from a fire hose. I think that was a post that you actually made, wasn't it, John? I if I recall. <laughs> I think you said, like, you said something like, yeah. um, like, oh, boosting posts is like, Bleh! 
right? You know, targeted ads, like drinking from the, you know, but there's moments in time where all the content's coming at you at one time and you're trying to digest it, right? And that's why I bring in right. Johnny, so that we're not all fire hose with it all. We can take some micro bit drips and say, okay, I'm getting what I'm doing now for my business is working and this is what I need to start looking at, right? Right. I have been skimming so many articles as they come out and talking to lots of people and colleagues and um, ad users and stuff to make sure I've got as much de data and detail right on the new changes because there is some erroneous information out there. So, you know, I have to try and work out, you know, join the dots as it were to make sure I give you guys the best. And, yeah, let's you know, do it. Let's take the, the, best, it all up. the best. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. All right. Okay. I'm excited. Who's so ready? Facebook, John, say, yeah, show me the secrets. <laughs> Type it in right, let's go. Let's go. There have been so many Facebook changes coming out at the moment. Keeping up with them has just been nuts, as we know. Um, a lot of them are indications of how Facebook wants to change our marketing behaviors on Facebook, right? You know, a little bit of controlled freakery going on there. But, you know, it's like if we, it's their house. If you, if you want to stay, we've got to play their game. So that's kind of the main message of today, in a way. You have a choice to make there. But um, the behaviors, Rhonda, are pretty much the way we've been doing um, your social media, the way you've been doing your social media uh, marketing on the Unstoppable family. Because, you know, you've been using stories the way they want us to do them from now on all the time. You've been, you know, creating organic stories that you produce on a daily basis, chunks of your life, natural, you know, sort of letting people into your life, um, you know, sort of like a fly on the wall. And uh, everything's just straight up as you see what you get, right? And, um, you know, teaching as you go along, you know, in, in bite-sized chunks. And you've been, um, you know, sort of uh, using keywords really well for that and uh, the certain features that come with it, you know, all the sort of um, features that you can stick on, things like stories and the like. Um, and also video and lives, etc. cetera. I'm going to go through that now. But basically, it's interesting that what you're teaching is spot on. It's in the right place, right time for what a lot of marketers are now gonna to have to learn if they want to keep optimizing, if they wanna keep playing the Facebook game and keep getting their ROI out of it, then they're gonna to have to listen up to these changes. And I put as many as, I, I try to put all of them into one space and try to cram it down into funnel. So I better get on with it, otherwise we'll be out of time, right? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with the changes, um, most of them came out of the recent Ethic Developers Conference and the Q1 earnings call before that, they were so jam-packed, they had to start releasing major changes before then because they just couldn't squeeze it into that time. And so they're talking and stressing about this ecosystem. Like Apple has its own ecosystem for a long time now, Facebook's been kind of playing with the idea of getting into hardware, software only, of course, but it is getting into um, hardware, as we know. Uh, we're going to talk about, a little bit about that, just touch on that. In a couple of um, instances that it's pushing forward, AR and stuff. and um, they're also needing to expand into new areas. I'm going to talk about why. So um, it laid down their plans, Facebook, and their goals and actions. And um, it showed us what they'll be and how they'll be mapped out over the next five years across its family of platforms within its expanding universe, comprising Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, and of course, Facebook itself. So some context regarding the size of this ecosystem. It's getting bigger. It is now 2.7 billion, 2.7 billion monthly users on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Messenger combined. And yes. so we all know- there's, there's our competition for, uh, for attention, right? Like everyone knows if you're not on the social space, I was asking everyone in the beginning, I'm like, look, you're running a business. So if you're still waiting for foot traffic, guess what? You're going you're gonna to turn into a old crusty skeleton bones because no one is looking to walk into stores anymore. They're just not. Right. Right, and if right. you do have a store, they've got to, You got to still grab their attention on their feed locally. Right, and local is the word because you know we're talking about. I'm going to mention that in a minute, but uh, Bill Gates famously said a long time ago that the internet is becoming the world's town square. Now, now Zuck picked up on that to intro at his Q1, and he said it's not just the world town town square anymore. It's also going to be going local, and yeah. so it's going to be going down that hierarchy of spaces. You know, like you know, Grand Central Square, Grand Central Station. How big is that for New York? New York's got all those smaller rooms and spaces and streets. There's a hierarchy around them. And your traditional villages will have um, the smallest space, which is your room. There'll be a, you know, surrounding a corridor leading to the lounge, which is, in a way, it's connected to, say, the large space, like Trafalgar Square in London. I don't know if you saw it when you went there, Rhonda. Did you see Trafalgar Square? It's of a course. classic. In urban, in urban design, 
my background's an, an urban design architect, so I did a case study on that. Um, and it, I compared it to a person's living room because it has lots of, um, you know, sort of uh, uh, family jewels and ornaments and stuff like carriage clock type things going on from history, important members of, of uh, say, the military, you know, past yeah. battles won, that type of thing, victories and stuff, lions and waterfalls. You know, the waterfall is like having um, nature brought into the living room when people like to have a potted plant that's alive. So you have one plant that's alive on, in the centre of the room on, on the table or something, right? So that, that's, that's the natural movement of water yeah. with light coming through. It's dynamic. Anyway, long story short, that's the large end of the scale. And you go all the way down the streets, they get smaller as you head towards your house. <laughs> and then your, your actual street may turn into a muse. And then that goes into your, your hall. And then you've got your living room and all the family's bedrooms, are, you know, basically maybe gravitate around that through corridors, right? So now that's what you're saying, you know, in a city, uh, we, we don't just have these public spaces, which is how um, Facebook's been doing it. And everybody's info is all over the place and too easily shareable for too many people. He's finally giving people what they want. And he's going down the hierarchy to the other end and actually bringing a lot of his future development and what they're making now into people's living rooms so people can share uh, and, um, you know, sort of join and have a community at a very granular level. Okay, so yeah. there's a hierarchy. So it's both ends. It's not getting rid of the big town square. It's both ends, but it changes the focus. And we as marketers need to know. Otherwise, you'll get caught out and you'll see your ROI go down. And there's a couple of reasons why your ROI might go down if you don't listen to these changes. So I better press on. <laughs> All right. So despite the privacy issues, many were surprised to see the market confidence um, in, in Facebook rise in the last quarter because the Q1 uh, basically told us that the stocks for Facebook had jumped 8.7% hot on the heels of the Q1. It did even better. So, um, you know, over the last quarter, Zuckerberg was impressed, obviously. Uh, that's, that's always been his main objective in the past, but now he's having to think about a couple of other objectives, like what his users want, right? So in the earnings call, he said this was a strong quarter, and our community and business continues to grow. This is what a prominent market analyst had to say. He said, the question of allocating advertising dollars to social media is no longer a matter of if, but where and how much. <laughs> So, you know, business as usual, but um, he, he, he's basically being very bullish about the, the, you know, the state of the stock in, in Facebook at the moment, despite the privacy scandals, right? So this is more important than ever before because 68% um, of American adults report that they are Facebook users. Still, despite all of that, there's still almost 70% of all US adults on Facebook. That is huge. Local businesses still wondering whether to get onto Facebook and advertise. Oh, sure. Let's, well, this is, this is, such, I think this is, this is such a, a big topic because we see, you know, as marketers, like I've been online for 13 years, right? How many of you guys have been online for quite some time? And we all knew we had to be online. That's what we did. So as a marketer, you're learning all this. But as a business owner, a brick and mortar business owner, they're just working inside, putting out the right signages, hoping they do discounts. maybe, And so they're all working inside and they're not ever learned how to bring yourself and bring and leverage what we do online. And so as marketers, right. we've got that stuff, right? Now Absolutely. I'm seeing so many new business owners. And I would say, John, what would you say percentages of business owners right now are not on marketing online? Not enough. Not, not enough. enough. Um, right? There's 30 million of them in the States, right? right. And um, I, I don't know the latest figure, but... Um, I know that something like, uh, oh, I can't remember the details. I did have that stat, but I didn't put it in the summary today because there's just so much info. It didn't make it to the, the final. But that's but, the thing. Um, I, 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 you know, if there's 30, over 30 million business owners, I would, I would suggest that there's probably under 30% that are actually leveraging properly, geo-targeting even their local region and their local area, right? And so there's a really big opportunity for all of us that are not only educators but are you know, service providers that can say, look, we know how to actually get in front of you. I, I've got actually several clients, John, that, that switch from inspirational business to going, oh my gosh, I've realized that business owners locally in Vancouver or in my local area have no clue how to market. He goes, I do. I'm just going to go and tell them, put some packages together to help them. And what happened is business model change, but it's because we have to get wise. That's why what we do on this show is we always, right. always what's happening now, how to Gotta leverage what's working organically for you, like push heavy, like what, why we talk so much about lives and, and video and then boom how to now utilize what's 
is Dr. Sullivan telling us, it's not a fact of, of, of when, it's where, mm -hmm. how to market, because we have to pay to play if we want to inject ourselves more attention in front of the right people, right? So let's go back Absolutely. to that where thought. Absolutely. I, I'm just amazed when I, when I do my demos to my, my local business guys to show them the power of Facebook, they don't realize the power of the targeting. And quite a bit of that has been taken away, I must say, you know, due to litigation in the court case recently, right? Um, it, in, I must say, I must stress, that's in the finance sector, in the housing sector, and in the employment sector, okay? There are new rules now, because there was a big court case, and Facebook had to kind of cough up, you know? Um, of, they of, won the of, of knowing who's unemployed, who's employed, what the money they're making? Yes, yeah. yeah. It's, it's to do with, um, you know, um, segregation, segmenting, yeah. You know, yeah. it's a touchy subject, but obviously, um, you know, people from socio-economic levels that are way below average, um, getting pushed out of the say, say housing market or job market, yeah. that type of thing, because they're not being targeted in ads. So that's 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 a fair point. That really needed to be addressed. I personally feel that. Yeah, but that's, absolutely. That's a lot of changes. Yeah, um, so keep going. Sorry, yeah. When when I show my local business clients that you can do just one thing: geo-targeting. Right, either with a ring on a dot, right, 15 miles, you know, a radius, or maybe 30, depending on their population and density, or I can do it by postcodes. They go, what? The? Now, now, postcodes is an issue because that's one of the areas that's been touched by, you know, this litigation. But I think that's just for um, those three sectors. So estate agents get affected by that, right? And uh, but don't worry, estate agents, because you can always take the email lists, right, and you can load that up and make your own bespoke audience, right, a custom audience. A look-alike audience you can do anything like that you can get extra out of Facebook in other ways because there's so many options to go for you see so not as all off yeah absolutely so um, Zuckerberg um, no you see oh, of those of those Americans yeah that's the stat 68% of the Americans in America on Facebook and of them three quarters of those users access every day right <laughs> they're, they're addicted you know, we all get that little dopamine rush when we hear the bing. <laughs> Who could it be? Is it? Blah, blah, blah. Zuckerberg also announced that Instagram and Facebook will not just remain the digital town squares, but will have more private spaces. That's what I was just talking about, right? And that Messenger and WhatsApp will be considered as the new digital spaces in your home, your living rooms, obviously bedrooms as well. And you can hang out with your friends and family there where you can share more private things than you would in public, right? So, you know, he's really stressing this. And you can see where he's going this. He, he's making a massive show. He's a very smart guy. They spent ages coming up with this strategy to be messaging the actual regulators behind the government that they're doing the right thing. All of this is about messaging the regulators. They have two main um, ambitions. They have two main goals in life, obviously, to serve the shareholders. We've known that ever since the IPO. And they've shown that pretty well. And the other thing that they're doing now is to uh, survive the regulators. Now, you know, okay, the regulators. So this is a big thing. So I want to bring this up because I, you know, especially my audience, co you know, coaches, consultant, relationships, right? Making money. They've got some of the very sensitive topics, right? That they speak about. So what yep. we're noticing as well is that they're being very protective on what content we can share. In fact, many of our clients are getting blocked. They're not able to share this kind of content because they're saying, look, you are sharing something too public. Right? So for instance, right. let's say you're a relationship coach, or let's say maybe you're a, 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 a I don't even know what they call themselves, like sensuality coach, right? Where you're like right. actually helping people get more connected to their sexuality, their sensuality. Well, it's like standing on the corner of the street in Times Square with your clothes off and saying, I'm free, check me out, I love myself, yeah, right? What yeah. happens? I okay. see that in Trafalgar Square every day. Right? Yeah, exactly. So you're trying to be free, try to express yourself, inspire people to do the same. But guess what? You're hitting families, you're hitting kids, conservatives, you're hitting people that although we should be accepted for ourselves, we are not respecting their also beliefs. So what Facebook is saying, look, stop doing it all in the public eye. Bring them into your living room, then. invite them into a group. So for those of you that are relationship coaches or you're doing and your topics are hot, yet so hot, you've got to always think, is what I'm saying too hot for everyone? 
Because if it is, you've got to say, hey, get on inside of our group because we know too that groups now, we can market into groups. Facebook is really heavily wanting us to leverage groups in a very big way because it's almost like your online virtual living room. Yeah. Right? That's what he's stressing. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's private and semi-private. There are obviously, you know, different um, densities of privacy, if you want to, want to call it that. You have the shutters down in your house giving a message to the people outside, right? <laughs> You open That's everything it. up, you're welcoming, you know? These sort of things, when you make the house exterior soft or hard, um, you leave your door open or shut, you know, family know whether it's coming or not, that kind of thing. And, you know, the same kind of thing is going on um, with what he's trying to achieve here. And at the end of the day, to, to understand and try and to get it right, obviously they've had, you know, their testing going, and they've obviously been, you know, talking to psychologists, <laughs> for example, right? right. Sure. Psychology. Psychology behind the perception of space is, is a key thing in this strategy here. Yeah, so, um, so keep, keep going, because I think it's really big. Um, and, and are you guys following this? You're getting this, knowing that the changes are we're, we're not only competing for attention, so we have to think of ways how do we give more, uh, how do we become more interesting, how to grab more attention, right? How do we actually provide value to people, but how do we bring them into our personal space as business owners so it's private, our conversations are real, and they're connected. So they want you to use groups. They want you to use Facebook Live to give more value to the world, leave more impact. But then the private stuff, bring them in a group or bring them into somewhere special and private that you can actually talk to them about what you want to talk to. And as a marketer, you can offer things to them that you want to offer to them, right? All right, Absolutely. I to break it down so I can Absolutely. understand it because it gets really techy. <laughs> really, really begin to kind of read the tea leaves, you know, and um, figure out what is it they're doing and go with the flow. It's really important to go with the flow with Facebook. Otherwise, you're really going to get your ROIs stung and you begin to notice quite quickly in the next few months. Now, this is a five-year plan. Don't forget, so nothing to panic about here. Some of it will take ages. Um, for example, moving everything to an end-to-end -end encryption and joining Messenger up with WhatsApp and Instagram. I'm going to touch a bit more on that in a minute. So let's get towards that point quicker. And so I was just um, carrying on from the family and friends there. Um, they, achieve, they want to achieve this with a Facebook pivot, <laughs> enrolling out what they could be called as an aspirational redesign. That's very boardroom kind of you know, language there, isn't it? And um, known as Facebook 5 or FB5, it's redesigned for both mobile and desktop. This is the new... Um, Facebook app, right? FB5. Um, we're seeing it, right? We're seeing it in in desktop uh, Facebook and on our mobile. And we've had the icons. Rhonda, you've had both your icons on your mobile and your, um, hang on, where else would it be? Sorry, the, the app icon is different to the Droid one, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. There's the round one. And, and if you look at, Rhonda, you're very good at marketing and messaging when you're trying to send a signal out to the regulators and to the public that you're becoming touchy-feely, you don't go from soft and rounded to sharp, do you? You do the other way around. So look what they've done to the app. And when yeah. you want to show that you're cleaning up your app, you do it with the, with the blue. They spent millions researching that Facebook blue. They went for a flat yeah. blue. It's not, it's not enriched, right? It's not, it's not technicolor. You know, it's, it's a flat. They put a little bit of gray in a blue. And the reason they went that is because they wanted at the most the best superlative example of trust. They, this color instilled in their test groups on people, it instilled the most trust, uh, which is quite ironic here, really, isn't it? That's why I didn't want to get rid of that blue for so long, because they put so much money into you getting the number one optimized tone of blue for trust. Well, and if you look you know, at that's, that's it, and especially being in branding, right? I work with my clients on what are the tone, what are the looks, the colors, and blue is trust. If you notice, it's also communication, right? Look at Twitter, right. look at the big brands that are using blue, right? And we Best know that- Messenger communication, yeah. And they, and they actually inject silver into there, silver and white, because silver actually shows that it's always innovative, right? Interesting. It's right? Wow. So that, that's, I, I love looking. I always love yeah. watching the way brands change. I also love seeing where brands make drastic branding makeover changes and they blow it. You're like, <laughs> why did you go to that? Right? One of my favorites is T-Mobile. They went to the hot, hot pink. Now knowing that that hot pink is now what, becoming one of the most known um, colors, they actually trademarked that color, um, T-Mobile, and um, they increased their, uh, their sales by like massive numbers because they went from a really funky pale pink into this super hot, sexy pink. We were like, oh, it's rich, it's real, it's, it's moving, and it's innovative, right? So I love um, psychology of color and, and why brands yeah. make adjustments. And of course, Facebook yeah. 
millions and billions yeah. into just alone, mm -hmm. looking at the way they transition their logo into the color design, um, because it does, it allows us to feel more approachable. So they're actually even sending us a message and saying, even the way that we're looking to show you, we want to be more real, more soft, more approachable, which I also yeah. think I love this, John, is that it goes back from like where Zuckerberg started his business. Yeah. It was pretty hard. And now he's like, oh, I've got a baby now. I've, I realize we're so social. Let's make this platform social. But we're, he's psychologically educating every one of you how to be a better marketer. Do you get that? He, well, story. he knows his stuff. But he's backed by a massive team of marketers and damn oh. good research. With that budget, you know, they, they make sure that they, they spend in the right places. And make so all we do is watch and we see the best of the best and we go, ah, I'm a marketer. So I got to tell more stories. I got to be a bit more soft. Look, I'm hardcore. I mean, I like to come at people like a bulldog, but I realize, <laughs> right? But you realize as a marketing message, your, your, your vulnerability connects with people. It allows them to realize you're real. So guys, these yeah. are all bombs that I'm dropping on you right now that you, if you are too straight up business, you're only going to get the straight up business ones and chances are they're going to get bored because they can research this stuff and go read it online. They want to know <laughs> there's a human behind this, that they want to listen to the human because you bring the message from what you've researched and what you've known and educated and you bring it into a soft, connected, yet personality type message, right? Absolutely. That's why we're buying time and buying attention. People just yep. like the, you, you repurpose the content, right? Absolutely. I Stories are going to make it a lot easier to repurpose the content. Think about that, you know. Think yeah. about the bright side of the changes and use them quickly. Use them quickly and go broad with the different applications uh, before the rest of the people do. <laughs> because people will take a while to pick up on these. And that's what this is yeah. about. This is about giving you the nuggets now so you can get active and get ahead of the curve with making these changes. And you could actually see your RRI go up just because the others aren't able to keep up with this bending platform. It's morphing and bending. And if you morph with it, you can ka-ching, ka -ching on your way. <laughs> so just one little, little note on the blue, sorry. Um, then the blue, before we carry on, um, there's something I know from banding from way back, you know, it, it, my time in an, in an architecture studio for 15 years. And um, we were always using blue quite a lot because um, studies have proven for more than that time that it is the number one color of choice for all banks. Financial institutions, any any corporate. Look how many corporates have blue. Rest of the Trust. Anyway, yeah. Moving on. Stay um, here. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Some people have um, their new icons on their phones and the new apps, and those who don't, don't worry because it's taking a while to roll out. Generally speaking, things usually get tested first in Canada. I mean, I'm an apps developer. I know that all our apps and 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 um, you know for sure Apple's apps. Um, always get tested out on, on Canada. Sorry to anybody in Canada, nothing personal really. I'm sure, you know, they just want a smaller population first before just, you know, having all these errors and bugs leaked all over the main population. Then it spreads out towards Europe and then the rest of the world, right? But it doesn't always follow that pattern. It varies what, depending on what they're actually rolling out. But you will get these new changes happening over the next three months. And the encryption things, the high tech things of actually building these apps connections together, these highways between WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook. That could take the five years, okay? Yeah. And I was listening to the tech guy himself. He said it could be anything from a year to five years. So, you know, don't panic. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the part that I like. Um, I always bring it to everyone what they can do now, where, what areas, what, what of this information is actually important. Like we could go through everything was in F8 and half of it, I'm like, that's not important to me. What's important to me yeah, yeah. is that all of you get that going live, being social, telling stories, using your, using your groups, building your audience through engagement, being interesting, buying their attention because you have something to provide that's also structured. See. Right. I know one thing, okay? Right. Kids love structure. Why? Because Those they are the want, algorithms. Right, well, of course, that. But we want, they want to know what they're going to do next. Like, kids will freak out. Like, parents are wondering why their kids are freaking out on the way to a trip or on, while they're driving to Disneyland. It's because you didn't give them the damn timeline. We're are we there stop. yet? Are we there yet? Right. Are we there yet? Like, I got that early on. I like my kid is very structured, and so am I. Because I'm like, all she knows, she it's predictability. So your customers, your clients, your 
the, your followers, all they want to know is that you are predictable. I do my show just like this every single time, same place, same time. But they also want to hear this. When you're delivering a message, a marketing message, there's structure behind it. In fact, that's what I teach in our 30-day challenge. I show you the exact structure you should follow in a Facebook Live that not only boom, headline, engagement, first three to six seconds, this is what I'm doing, right? It's called the setup. The payoff, what's the content I'm going to get from you? And it's got to be micro bit of content. And then it's the close that's call to action or the open loop. See, there's a deep structure that I go into in our 30 day challenge because what I've realized, John, is that, is that people are, they, they hear this information. They just want to use it, leverage it. They just go wild. And then they're like, it's still not working. What they said didn't work. Facebook ads don't work, right? How many times have you heard that? <laughs> right. Right? <laughs> they tried doing it on their own. They didn't actually follow what works psychologically, right? Because even though we're marketers and we want to just give content, we also have to give them a predictable structure that allows their mind to go, ah, oh, that's the topic. I like that. I'm sticking around. Oh, there's only three bullet points today. Excellent. I have time for that. I'm sticking around. Oh, you mean she's going to do another topic tomorrow? I like that. I'm coming back. See what I just did? Boom. That's how you set up a, a good Love Facebook it. Live. And that's what we teach so deeply in our, not only our 21 day plan, but our 30 day challenge is how to put your content together, deliver it consistently and create what I call the Pied Piper effect, which people keeps them moving forward. And then all of a sudden they're like, wow, I love what you got. And they're either in your group or they come to a live masterclass or a webinar. And then you go, guess what? You've loved me for three weeks. I've reprogrammed your mind for 21 days because that's how long it takes to create a habit right? 21 days. We do a 21 day ritual, um, our, right. our habit forming of our Facebook lives. And then we make an offer. Right. Do you realize that Facebook loves all this guys? All these updates are like, Oh my God, they've got engagement. They've got people that love them. Whether we're paying for marketing or not, we're kind of faking the algorithm of tricking them because Facebook is going, Oh my God, I'm going to give them more attention. People love them. And then all of a sudden, boom, we're bringing them into an offer, a moment in time that says, this is where the rubber meets the road. You've loved me, but you don't know the structure that I'm talking right. about. You need to get my 30K and 30 day challenge. See what I just did there? Right? <laughs> right? Very nice. I love your techniques. <laughs> <laughs> always teaching as I do. And I always tell my audience this and my clients, everything I ever do, I'm always doing it as I'm teaching you. So then you can see it. Then you're like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. Right? That's brilliant. Always the best yeah. way. I love it. So, um, all right, last so, yeah. few points because we're, you know, we're kind of hitting to when we can do some uh, deeper follow-up stuff. What, so what is one of the one thing, John, that everyone needs to know that came out of F8? That if they don't do it, then their, their business will suffer. Right, so to get on to that, um, uh, stories. Critical. Mm -hmm. They have to do stories. I've got, I've got takeaways as I go along, and then I've got a roundup of primary takeaways at the end. Right? Don't want to miss the end bit as well. And if we need to, we can jump to that at some point. But um, there, there's, there's uh, action steps as I go along, obviously, okay. so you get too dull. <laughs> All right. So how much longer you got? Because my, my clients like predictability, and I know that you're kind of going from start to finish. I kind of like yeah. to go boom, 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 boom. What yeah, you yeah, need right now? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I'm, obviously I'm late, so I'm going to take as, as much time as you guys need, but let's, let's try and get there sooner rather than later. So um, let's just pick up some main points. Um, the new app, for example, in terms of use, we've talked about the graphics, it's cleaner. You know, they've got the dirty blue, it's much brighter, blue. it's more vibrant. Um, look at the keywords here, all to do with positive and love and fluffiness and changing the, changing the language, right? The design language. And um, the redesign does have a bunch of things going for it, even though people don't like change. A lot of people say they don't like, you know, the new look already just because it's different. And they'll get used to it. But the app is simpler, it's faster, it's more immersive. It puts the focus on stories, on groups, on events. All right, think about these things. Please make notes of this as go along because then you've got the, you know, the basic nuggets that you need and going forward to optimize and keep your ROI up as the changes go. So for the future, we're looking at a privacy focused social foundation, meaning more groups, more private, more ephemeral, more messaging, okay? The ephemeral of the stories, you know, obviously that started with Snapchat and has done like gangbusters on Instagram. And now they're doing really well on Facebook, aren't they, Rhonda? Yours are fantastic. Very, very I love well. what you do. I just got like I, my stories have like thousands of eyeballs lately. Thousands right. of eyeballs. Right. Yeah, and that's and that, that what you, 
What was that one you dropped with you and Brian? Well, it was over yeah. a thousand, right? That's that, one, that one specifically, 592, but I've been late, lately, thousands. And I'm like, I just only get like 100 or 50, and now thousands because they're seeing the more active you are in your stories, the more they're showing, right? Yeah. And don't and, forget, people, also, the more active you are generally in Facebook, you know, just going in those back rooms and connecting with people every day, the more algo juice your other stuff gets as a bonus and people don't know that secret so i do as much as my business in facebook as much as possible because i get this extra percentage of love fd love yeah me too and same so this is what this is one of my best strategies everyone i'll give you right now if you're making a post it should be story based and something that either touches them or educates them as well i usually do both i start with a little uh pull you in with emotion and then i hit you with some some bullet points or statistics that you should know so you don't feel like see I communicate to the feelers and the logic, the ones that are in the heart and the logic, right? Because I'm a logical thinker, but I know we buy an emotion, right? I know right. we have to make decisions based on emotion. So every story or post I make has emotion and a bit of logic to make sure you can make a decision, right? Um, that okay. connects the two. So we do that. And then what I do is every time I make any kind of post is if you comment, guess what you get from me? A re-comment. Every time, more juice. Next is I make sure it does get shared in stories because that's where there, that additional feeling comes from. I also, if you notice lately, I've been saying, hey, do you guys want to reach out to me? You got a question about this? Or maybe you want to join me at my event or you want to work with me or you want to do something. Reach out to me. Why? Because you're going to send me a message on Facebook and I'm going to reply. And guess what Facebook sees? Woo, feedback loops. They like it. And actually, they're talking and you are the one that solicited the conversation, not I. Right. That's the difference. People that are working and running online businesses are in the biz snop, biz, biz snop space. It's kind of the busy snot space because it's super, makes my, me stuffy. I get allergic to that kind of space. Is that they're teaching them to go after all these people and say, hey, 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 guess what? Facebook jail. That's why they call it Facebook jail. Because if you get at people too hard, they're like, uh-oh, you're chasing and there's no engagement. Yeah. Right? So that's one thing I want every one of you to realize and know. It doesn't matter where you are, where you're playing. Instagram or Facebook, even on YouTube. I'm not big on YouTube as much anymore. I'm bigger now on Instagram and big on Facebook because it's where my people play. And so we create more and more and more of that algorithm and that Facebook juice by just doing those little things. Even if you just did that, more stories, more connection, logic and emotion, replying, asking them to answer you, talk to you in Messenger, giving them a value, bringing them into a group. Now, I know that you've got tons I want to talk about, John, but because we are already at the top, we're at 57 minutes, I always commit to my clients, my customers, my followers, that I will only ask them for their time and a finite amount of time is 60 minutes. So we are running out of time. I will um, always ask John to do some follow-ups as well, um, and we can always have him back on. But let me know, every one of you guys, if you actually got a lot of value out of today, what was the very one biggest takeaway that you got from today, right? The biggest thing that you'll implement today, and I want you to write it down below, but I also want all of you to know is this, is that we're talking a lot about that 30-day that challenge that I run, and we're talking about the 21-day plan and the structures. Um, we just launched the 30K challenge last month, and we crushed it. I mean, literally our clients, they're not only getting more engagement, more reach. Um, several clients hit and surpassed the 30K um, in 30 days, and this was brand new, right? So we're rinsing, repeating it again. So the doors have just opened today, so you can go to swanlinks.com and you can register for the 30K and 30 day challenge. It's only hundred bucks, super duper cheap, ridiculous. I give two of my two comma club award strategies inside that. So I'm giving it all to you guys away. Um, but we're going to officially start on the 27th. So the doors are going to seal shut like a vault, lock shut on the 27th. So if you get in now, you get all the content now, everything we're talking about now, and we'll kind of prep you with some stuff, and then we're gonna start nailing it again. I'm on a mission this cycle that I want to have a minimum of 150 people in the challenge, a minimum of that, right? And I am committed to creating and having 20% of those people, right, that's 30 of them, hit 30K. Okay, because I know how to do it. I know if you rinse and repeat it consistently, you will hit it. Okay, so we're doing some really cool stuff this time. Um, if you're already in my current group, you get to stay in this cycle because after this cycle, it's going to become a monthly membership because we're seeing what happens when you stay 
in. Okay, so every one of you guys are, that will join us now, we start on the 27th, doors have opened. So if you go to swanlinks.com, or they'll put the, the, they'll put the link down below so you guys can make sure you register, share it with others, um, you'll get some of the new insights and you'll get it added to the group. Um, but next round, it's completely different. The whole structure is going to change. So I want all of you to get in now so you're seeing what we're going to do new. Uh, there's a new app coming out that I've built for this 30K and 30 Day Challenge. I built an app for it. So now you don't have to actually only get it by logging in. You get it on your phone. You get to do the 30K Challenge on your phone, push replies, all that fun, sexy stuff that we are talking about, which is bots and connection and emotion and, and bringing us together. You're going to get me in your face every day reminding you what to do today, right? And that, I think, is one of the biggest pieces about why I love these kind of challenges and the structure is because we are busy, super busy. And you start something and you fail at it and you quit it because you're too busy. So I'm looking to create a very bite-by-bite bite, micro bits of content each day for you to apply, right? So that every day, like, that's all I have to do is that one thing. I got that. I can do that. And if you follow exactly what I share with you how to do it, you will hit those goals. It'll, it'll increase your reach and increase your engagement. And for me, the objective here is I put this together working with Russell Brunson um, and his book. And I put it together because I was like, people don't use these structures. I thought it was so simple. And then I realized the amount of like waterfall of people and tsunami coming at me going, I can't believe that's what you do. And that's what you taught us. I put it together in our own, not only our own book, but our own challenge, our video delivered every day challenge that you follow along with the group every day. Some of you might be so new in it and you're learning it all and that's okay. You're going to go along with the cycle, but then you're going to re-rinse it again and you're going to be more knowledgeable, right? So that's what I realized is that first cycle, my clients do it and they're, they're rocking it, the ones that implement it. We ran the first 30K challenge. People were like, whoa, they started for seven days and they got nervous because there was so much to learn. So I said, ah, okay, I get that. It's a lot to learn here. It's, it's very duplicatable, yet you're trying to figure it out. So let you, let's keep them rinsing and repeating. We're going to stay in a cycle doing it all together. And so this is the second cycle of this actual process. Um, so for those of you that are going to get inside, you know, we'll start on the 27th together. And we're going to walk through it each and every step. We're going to do some pre-framing early on. So you get that first week of prep uh, together. And um, then we're going to keep the cycle going. So again, uh, 30K and 30-day challenge, the doors have opened. They're slamming shut on the 27th. Um, make sure that you do register and join us. And um, I, uh, I'm excited to have you guys in the inside. John, I know you got a lot more to talk about. But because we were a, bit, a little bit late, we're going to have to come back to it. Uh, we always have a lot to talk about. So let's, uh, let's keep that content moving. And I will make sure that everyone is shared and I share your stuff that you're dropping because this is the kind of bombs that everyone wants to know about. But I want all of you to know this is stuff you can implement right now. And if you were doing it, get excited because Facebook is loving that you were doing it and that you're continuing. If you're new, get in now because I'll show you how to do it and what they want because we've been doing it for 10, 13 years, right? All right, so John, thank you, my man. Uh, if there's is there one parting ways that they can follow you or how do they find you and uh, one parting statement you've got. Um, yeah, uh, hit me up at John Court you know, on my personal profile on Facebook because um, I prefer to meet people Conventionally, even though I am a chatbot builder, um, I don't put my chat bot between me and you. I like to make personal connections. So you know where to get me. My profile, John Court, J-O-N, all right? So it's for Jonathan, but not with an H in there. And um, I'm doing chatbots for coaches and for small businesses and program makers and the like. So um, I'm doing bespoke chatbots. And if you'd like a demo, get in touch. And um, I'm opening up a chatbot group to teach people how to do their own as well, because there are some chatbot apps platforms that can um can be you know learned quite well um, if you've got a little bit of tech ability and you can build some basic blocks but you know to put to get you on your way if you join my chatbot group you'll get a chatbot on entry um, oh. and if you join my linkedin group you'll get a chatbot too and also um, a guide on how to optimize how to get started with a linkedin and how to optimize because one of the things i didn't get to here in the conclusion of the whole report is that diversification is key now we're seeing marketers actually beginning to leave Facebook, not, not leave completely, but to reduce the amount of money they spend on Facebook. And as Rhonda was saying, move to Instagram. There is a stampede 
gently starting towards Instagram now after this last news and after the last few months of marketing. Well, I, like not about- I-, I love this. This is awesome. I have an idea, John. How about this? Anyone that joins our 30K and 30 Day Challenge, I'll have John as a special private call inside and we'll do some really specific things and we can um, have those join inside of your chatbot and we'll teach them how to run a chatbot and we'll give you guys some special opportunities if you can't figure it out yourself and you want John to do it um, for that to happen because I love that, right? I want all of our clients to get some of your best work and so um, I'll make sure that you guys know how to find John and then we'll, um, you know, you can find him on your own or if you do decide to join the 30K Challenge. I will give you guys, I will have John come out specifically to do some of the stuff that he's doing or invite you to a private call that he's hosting for his people and, and get you guys inside that group. Fair? Yeah. That sounds that's great. That's that sounds better great. than making him run around Times Square looking for your facility. I'd rather like take him and go, here you go. Let's go. Here's John. He's my friend. <laughs> right? Oh, I love you, Rhonda. Oh, dear. So good to have you, my man, as always. Um, I really, truly appreciate it. I know it's in the middle of the night for you. So I want to leave all of you with one thing for me, which is uh, if you're going to create a brand, create a sexy brand, and if you're going to be anything, be unstoppable.